when is losing weight dangerous? It's dangerous when you're using a drug. So I've talked about ozempic and semi-glutide before, and some new studies are coming out finding that um, people that are on ozempic have terrible, what do they call it, putrid belching. So all I can imagine that means is that it's almost like you're vomiting in your mouth, uh, diarrhea, and suicidal thoughts. So what we're looking at is an injection of a hormone that your body, body normally produces, but you're being given what's called super physiologic doses, which basically means your body produces you know, a level of one and this is a level of you know, 25. So it's not natural, of course. Uh, and the reason that, um, it, and what you're being given is what's called a GLP-1 agonist, which basically the hormone is, is GLP. And, and what the hormone does naturally is it gives you satiety, it keeps your blood sugar nice and stable. Um, so, you know, you, you eat, you eat a, a normal amount, um, you feel good, you feel satisfied from what you ate, etc. So all's, all's right with the world. Uh, but with this injection, what's happening is that, um, well, one of the things that the hormone does is, is it makes sure that your blood sugar is stable. So what that means is food comes in and, and it's not like when you have sugar or refined carbohydrates where you go, wee, you know, blood sugar goes way up and then it crashes again and you're like, wow, I need my next fix. And, and that's unstable blood sugar. That's the roller coaster of blood sugar that you're trying to stay away from. But when your blood sugar is nice and stable, you know, you eat, you feel good, you're not hungry for several hours, then you get hungry, you eat a normal amount, you know, that's nice stable blood sugar. So this hormone helps to do that, but when you're given the injection, like with ozempic or semi-glutide, what happens is that it really, it, it so much slows the rate of entry of food that you can eat very much, and so you get full very, very fast, and also it slows the metabolism, so you feel full for a very long time. Now, what's happening with some people is what's called gastroparesis, which is basically your stomach uh, freezes and it's not, it's not breaking down food the way it should. And, and that can be quite dangerous gastroparesis. So it, it's basically a freezing of your digestive system. And that's where the putrid belching comes from because it's just, the food is just sitting in your stomach and it's rotting and then, and then gas comes up and it tastes like rotten food because that's what's in your stomach at that point. So, you know, we fall for these drugs over and over and over again. The quick weight loss, and we just keep jumping on the bandwagon. And I don't know what else to tell you other than it never works. It never works because you are trying to fool mother nature. I was trying to remember that commercial. It's probably, I don't know, 15 plus years ago, but it's like, you know, it's not nice to fool mother nature. It was some, some product, but it was a, it was a cute, it was a cute commercial, but it's true. So uh, the human body is a miraculous, wonderful, complex machine. And when you try to mess with it, uh, very often you get ill effects. Um, suicidal thoughts was also something that's coming up with the use of Ozempic because it's not just a hormone that's affecting the gut, it's affecting the brain as well. And it turns out people with more addictive personalities are not doing well with this drug either. So there's a couple of studies that came out and I'll put them in the, in the notes, but wanted to talk about what you can do to raise your GLP-1. So this hormone that keeps you satisfied and keeps nice stable blood sugar. How can you do that naturally without a dangerous drug that, um, can really cause some very hazardous side effects. So uh, number one is mindful eating. Now, easier said than done, I understand, but it's basically uh, not eating while you're on the run. You know, if you're, if you're just gonna like grab something and run, just say, okay, I'm gonna be a little bit more hungry, but I'm gonna eat when I can sit down and relax and chew my food and uh, perhaps have a nice conversation with a friend or a family member rather than this gulping, you know, eating food on the run. Because what happens is that um, you've got the fight or flight nervous system. We all know about that. When you're in fight or flight, you're pretty anxious and stressed. And then the, the flip side of the, 
that sympathetic the fight-or-flight system is your parasympathetic system and that's the rest digest relax system so in order to have good amounts of this hormone you want to make sure you're eating in that relaxed state now you're sure as heck not <laughs> not in that state when you're gulping your food on the run and so just I, you know, it, it's, it's, that's where the mindful eating comes from. Just figuring out how am I going to just take a breath, even if you're sitting in your car, but you, you know, take some deep breaths, which by the way, the, the box breathing as it's called, where you, you inhale through, through your nose for about a count of five or six, you hold for a count of five or six, you slowly blow it out through your mouth for a count of five or six, and then try to hold again before you do the inhale. And five of those, this does not take a long time, five of those will switch you into the parasympathetic rest, digest, keyword, digest mode, and out of that fight or flight mode, where actually the food going in will be better digested, it'll keep your blood sugar more stable, you won't have as many cravings. So simple task of, of breathing and sort of looking at life and just, just you know, kind of making a bit of a pact with yourself that you're not going to be, be you know, eating as you're running, <laughs> running down the hallway, that you're going to postpone it a little bit and, okay, be a bit more hungry, um, but get into that proper mode. The other one is chewing, which I, I, I so need work on this myself. Um, but again, if you're, you know, dining with a friend or a, a loved one and um, you're more in that relaxed mode, we do tend to chew our food more, which is also very helpful for digestion and this hormone um, exercise. So if you're, if you're somebody who eats dinner and then you just can't stop, you just want to keep eating as the night goes on, uh, taking a brisk walk um, for about 10 to 12 minutes in the evening can really help turn off those cravings. A, a walk after dinner Kind of wait about 30 minutes or if you just say wow I, I can't even wait 30 minutes I'm just going to be on to the ice cream then just get out of the house where you can get away from the freezer and or refrigerator and you know start with just a, a slow walk if you still feel full and then you know as time goes on and you've you know digested enough then get a little bit faster a little bit of a brisker walk we're not running we're not pounding the pavement but a brisker walk that actually turns off those cravings which is great because you don't want to eat a good three hours before you go to bed anyway so what are we talking about we're talking about the hormone glp1 which is being injected into people in the form of um, semi-glutide and ozempic and we're really finding some dangerous side effects there was also association with thyroid cancer uh, that i did in an earlier video but people are really starting to to see this this freezing or this gastroparesis in their stomach which can be life-threatening potentially so um, we don't want the quick fix we want the natural fix some Foods that are uh, high in certain phytonutrients are very good. So the, the dark uh, blueberries, raspberries, pomegranates, um, pomegranate juice is very high in an organism called acromantia, which is anti-cancer. So a little extra benefit of that. Oh, green tea is another one. So it's high in polyphenols and another thing to help keep this hormone elevated and again, nice stable blood sugar, you're not craving and you'll naturally lose weight. You're not gonna lose 20 pounds in a week. You shouldn't lose 20 pounds in a week. You should lose one and a half to two pounds a week. Yeah, who doesn't want it faster? 70% of Americans are overweight and or obese. So um, yeah, there's a huge population that wants to qu this quick fix, but I'm sure you don't wanna be putting yourself in, in, a, in a dangerous uh, situation that puts your life at risk, which is what this is potentially doing. So the other parts that I wanted to go over uh, was intermittent fasting actually, and trying to eat during the daylight hours versus, versus late at night. 
Again, you're getting too close to bedtime, which is, is not good for keeping your weight stable um, and also not good for digestion. So a good two and a half, three hours. If you can get to that three hour mark before going to bed after eating, that's great. The days are definitely longer right now. It's, it's um, early August, so we've got nice long days and we can very much eat in those daylight hours. I like a 12 to 14 hour intermittent fast. This isn't for everyone. If, if you're somebody who've had some food issues in the past with anorexia, bulimia, you don't want to do this. Um, but for the average person, 12 to 14 hours is great. There are some people who only eat one meal a day. I think that's hard on the GI tract. But uh, generally speaking, 12 to 14 is, is, is nice and stable. So you're chewing your food, you're doing intermittent fasting, you're eating those nice dark colored berries and, and green tea. Uh, you're taking a walk after dinner or, or any meal when you start to feel cravings, take a walk and, um, and then exercise. So the more you can exercise, the higher uh, that GLP-1 hormone will be and you'll get nice stable weight loss, great energy and nice stable digestion. So if you enjoyed this information, please give it a thumbs up, share it with others. And um, again, this drug really has me concerned. And of course, I mean, it's been around for a while, but it's really been popular for about six months or eight months now. And sure enough, we're finding all the, the negative information and I don't want you to be one of those people that suffers. But if you do need help with digestion or weight loss, definitely feel free to reach out. That's why I'm here.